dear students i am dr shikha pande associate professor from the institute of aeronautical engineering so in this lecture series of environmental studies today i am going to discuss about the environmental legislation and environment protection act so let's start this uh, lecture with the legislation means what does it mean and wh why it has been implemented in india for uh, for the um, protection of the environment so legislation basically it means a plan of action adopted by the government rationalizing the course of action means legislation means a plan of actions that should be adopted by the indian government for the rationalizing of courses of action and the environment legislation try to intact all the law of environment in a justified manner means what environment legislation it will intact all the laws of environment means and it should be in a justified manner <clears throat> this legislation will try to enact the laws given for the environment in a justifiable manner and the environment legislation although varies from country to continent focuses on a common goals of secure and sustainable living at the earth that means that the <clears throat> environment legislation will varies from any uh, con from country to country or continent to con continent that uh, and that will mainly focus on the common goals and that is that is the secure and sustainable living at the earth means what this environment legislation is in every country in everywhere on in every continent but the goal was goal was same in all country that is the main goal of this uh, environment legislation is to protect and secure the sustainable living at the earth and the sustainability of the environment that is the main basic theme of this environmental legislation it should be it should be um, enforced to to see that the all the laws um, related with the environment should be in a justifiable manner and the, it will be vary from country or continent but uh, it is the focus on the main and common goal that is of secure and sustainable living at the earth now comes to the next things what is the objective of that environment policy some environment policy has been made to to protect the environment to protect the environment so first of all already a uh, policy has been given by the government of india to protect environment against its uh, exploitation uh, against the pollution and everything so this uh, this has takes its origin from the national environment policy act of us this takes its origin from the national environment policy act nepa of us and what it is it is a policy that has been framed with which encourage productive and enjoyable harmony between man and his environment a policy should be framed that should be uh, focus encourage on the productive and enjoyable enjoyable harmony or relation between the man and his environment next point is that to promote efforts which will prevent or eliminate damage to the environment and biosphere and stimulate the health and welfare of man to enrich the understanding of the ecological system and natural resources important to the nation so this this are the environment policy that has been made for the benefits of environment first point is that it will encourage productive and enjoyable harmony between the man and his environment and the it will promote efforts which will prevent or eliminate damage to the environment and biosphere and stimulate the health and welfare of the man to enrich the understanding of the ecological system and natural resources important to the nation and next point is that this is the objective of environmental policy has been originated from this uncd conference that uh, we have already discussed <clears throat> so united nation conference on human development that is held, held in Stok stockholm in 1972 it from there from that point indian constitution has been amended to include protection of environment as a constitutional mandate so after this conference held in stockholm in, that is united nation conference on human and environment in ninth in the year 1972 the indian constitution was amended to include protection of the environment as a constitutional mandate means that uh, that will be has to be mandatory after the uh, after this conference that it should be a uh, it should include the protection of environment as a constitutional mandate there is a directive given to the state as one of the directive principle of a state policy regarding the protection and improvement of the environment means what 
a directive has been given to the state as one of the directive principle is there that principle is regarding the policy regarding the protection and improvement of the environment this is a directive that has been given to the state as a directive principle of a state policy regarding the protection and environment of the in protection of the environment so this legislation will start with this two article of the uh, of our constitution so indian constitution has given two article that has been related with the environment protection first one is article 48a and then article 51 ag so first article 48a has uh, has states that the or the state shall endeavor to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country this this has been given by article 48a the state shall endeavor to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country so state shall have a uh, endeavor to protect and improve the environment and safeguard the forest of wildlife it is it is has been the power of the state and its state should take the responsibility to endeavor to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country likewise article 51 ag indicates that the, it it is a duty of every citizen of india to protect and improve the natural environment including forest lake river and wildlife and to have compassion for the living creature this this has been given by article 51 ag and article 48a 51 g states that the, it is a duty of every citizen means every citizen a duty is to protect the and improve the natural environment including forest all natural environment that will include the forest lake river wildlife and the compassion of the living creature means it is a duty of each and every individual all citizen of india to protect and safeguard their natural environment and that natural environment include the forest lake river wildlife and compassion for the living creature they will provide the compassion for the living creature also so article 48a has mandatory has given the power to the state that it is a it is a responsibility of the state to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country likewise article 51 ag has been given that it is a duty of every citizen of india to protect and improve the natural environment like that, that will include forest lake river wildlife and that will give compassion for the living creatures also now comes to the next point this is about the why this environmental legislation why this uh, environmental legislation is important because of the reason that the awareness and consideration of environment covers several environmental issues with due to this awareness and consideration for the environment many issue has been uh, has been uh, pointed out that is the pollution of water air and soil land degradation industrialization urbanization depletion of natural resources etc etc that environmental law plays a very crucial and important role in regulating the use of natural resource and in protecting the environment means this environment law is playing a very crucial crucial and important role in regulating the use of natural resources and in protecting the environment so this in the legislation environment legislation is very much important and it's it, it is need needed to protect and aware the consideration of environment that will cover several environmental issues such as pollution of water air and soil land degradation industrialization urbanization depletion of natural resources etc environmental law plays a very crucial important role in regulating the use of natural resources and in protecting the environment and that's why they have given some general rules they have uh, made some rules on the protection of forest and wildlife and the prevention and control of pollution for the air then prevention and control for the uh, pollution and control for the water also so it they environmental laws has been made for everything that is related with the environment either it is in for the general rules has been, or policies has been made forest and wildlife uh, act, conservation acts has been made water conservation and um, prevention and control of pollution likewise air prevention and control of pollution many law has been made so this is the basics of the environmental legislation what the environmental legislation has been made in india first of all in the year 1986 first law has been made that is environment protection act environment protection act is a very important act because this act will cover all the all the act com- coming under this acts that's why this act is, this is known as umbrella act 
Umbrella Act. That's why it is known as the EP Act is also known as the Umbrella Act. In the year 1989, the objectives of hazardous waste management and handling rules is to control has been made. And that rule is for the control, the generation, collection, treatment, import, storage and handling of hazardous waste. Means those waste that is hazardous means that is very much dangerous. So, so for this, uh, in 1989, hazardous waste management and handling rule has been made, and that that rule will co will consider the generation, collection, treatment, import, storage, and handling of hazardous waste. Likewise, in the year 1980, 1998, the biomedical waste has been made. This biomedical waste is for the management and handling rule, and this this is the legal binding on the healthcare institution to streamline the process of proper handling of hospital such as segregation, disposal, collection and treatment. So this biomedical waste management rule has been made in the year 1998. That will uh, make a legal binding for the hospitals to streamline the process of their handling of hospital waste like uh, animal tissue or uh, like cotton, syringe and everything that is very much inf infectious waste. So the, they have made rules for the process of handling of these rules and this rule will uh, will uh, cover all the part that is segregation of uh, say, biomedical waste and its disposal, collection and then treatment. Likewise, in the year 2000, the municipal solid waste management rule has been made. In 2000, apply for the and this will apply to every municipal authority that will be responsible for the collection, segregation, storage, transportation, processing and disposal of municipal solid waste. Again, in 2000, uh, waste management rule has been made for municipal solid waste. That is in 2000 year and that will apply for the every municipal authority and it will, it will be responsible for the collection, segregation, storage, transportation, processing and disposal of municipal solid waste. In the year 2002, the Noise Pollution Regulation and Control Act rules has been made that lay down such terms and conditions as are necessary to reduce noise pollution, permit use of loudspeaker or public address system during night hour or, or during the cultural or any in religious festive occasion. That's why in the 2002, they have made a regulation and control amendment has been done for this noise pollution control because and they have made strict action against this noise and they will they have taken a necessary step to reduce the noise pollution that will permit the use of uh, loudspeaker or public address during the night night hours or on during any cultural or religious festive occasion now comes to the next uh, next uh, for the forest and wildlife these laws are the in, in environmental legislation and next the, the point they have covered is, is like the all the uh, acts um acts uh, and uh, rules on related to related to forest and wildlife so for it is related with forest and wildlife first rule has been made act has been made that is in the year very early 1927 and that is the indian forest act and amendment should be done in the year 1984 and it is one of the many surviving colonial status next is in the year 1972 the Wildlife Protection Act has been made and at the at a time to time amendment has been also made in, in all those rules. And in the year 1973, amendment 1991 provides for the protection of birds and animals and for all matter that are connected to whether it is for their habitat or for water hole or for forest that sustain them. Again, in the year 1980, the Forest Conservation Act and rule has been made in the year 1980. 1980 81, they will do amendment that will provide protection and conservation of the forest. And again, in the year 2002, the Biological Diversity Act has been made and it is an act to provide for the conservation of biological diversity, sustainable use of its components and fair and equitable sharing of the benefits arising from the use of biological resource and knowledge associated, associated with it. So in 2002, already CBD has been made to protect the uh, biodiversity and equitable sharing of the knowledge or equitable sharing of the benefits that is arising from the biological resources. Now next uh, laws is about the on the water. In the Water Act, the first act for the water has been made in the year 1974. 1974, the Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act was established as institutional structure for preventing and abating water pollution. In the year 1977, 
अगेन वाटर प्रिवेंशन एंड कंट्रोल ऑफ पॉल्यूशन सेस एक्ट हैज बीन प्रोवाइड फॉर द लेवी एंड कलेक्शन ऑफ सेस और फीस ऑन वाटर इफ एनी इंडस्ट्री इज कंज्यूमिंग और लोकल अथॉरिटी इज कंज्यूमिंग इन द ईयर नाइनटीन सेवेंटी एट सेवेंटी एट The Water Prevention and Control Cess Rule contains the, contains the standard definition that indicate the kind of and location of meters that every consumer of water is required to affix. Nineteen ninety one Coastal Regulation June notification has been made that has put regulation on various activities like the construction of anything in the Coastal Regulation June. Two thousand ten wetland rules has been given. So, so this is the chronological order of uh, all the rules that has been made on the water, and that com comes under the environmental legislation of India. So it has been started in the nineteen seventy four, ninety, and then nineteen seventy seven, seventy eight. Cess rule has been given. Nineteen ninety one coastal regulation June has been given. Two thousand ten wetland rules has been coming. Now next point is about the air. So first. Uh, Rule on the air. It comes under the year nineteen eighty two, then nineteen eighty seven. So first, nineteen eighty two, they def uh, they has made air prevention and control of pollution. That rule defines the procedure of meetings of the boards and the power entrusted to them. That defines the procedure and meeting of the boards. Boards like uh, CPCB, CPCB and SPCB. CPCB means Central Pollution Control Board and SPCB means State Pollution Control Board. In the year nineteen eighty seven, the Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Amendment Act has been made that empowers the Central and State Pollution Control Board to meet with grave emergencies of air pollution. Now it comes to the next uh, act that we are going to discuss about is the Environment Protection Act of nineteen eighty six. This is the important rule, um, uh, important act. This EP Act is very much important act because this act will cover all the area and it is called as Umbrella Act also. So why it uh, when it has been amendment and when it has been planned to execute? So in the period of 1970, experienced the ascent globally in industrialization, leading to degradation of the environment at a very high pace. The result of these combined efforts was the United Nations Conference on Human and Environment, that is the Stockholm Conference, that is in the year 1972 from 5 to 16 June, and at that time, India Bhopal gas tragedy is there in the 1984. That will called a very urgent legislation in the field of environment. Bhopal gas tragedy was there in India in the year 1984. That is a very very disaster, very much drastic disaster, and that will spread the toxic gases from the methyl phosgene and mic from the bhopal gas tragedy and next is the in this background the parliament passed the environment protection act in 1986 and the environment protection rule 1986 that's why the indian government has give, passed a rule on the environment protection act and environment protection rule and the Then the, that act came into force on November nineteen nineteen eighty six, and it it will be extended to the whole of the India. The act was passed to provide for the protection and improvement of the environment and for matters connected therewith. The act gives certain power to the central government to take measures for the purpose of protecting and improving the quality of the environment and to protect environmental pollution. This this act will give some powers to the central government to take. Measures for the purpose of protecting and improving the you know, quality of the environment and to prevent environmental pollution. This act is called as Umbrella Act. It it will design to provide a framework for central government coordination of the activities of various central and state authorities established under previous law, such as the Water Act and Air Act. So that's why this act is the Umbrella Act. It will provide a framework for the central government coordination. of the activities of the various central and state authorities established in the previous law now next is the ep act ep act will give definition of the basics of the environment like uh, first of all one is that the environment means it will include water air and land and the interrelationship exist among the between uh, exist among and between the water air and land and human beings other living creature plants microorganism and property environmental pollution means any solid liquid or, or gaseous substance present in such concentration or may be or tend to be injurious to the environment this will come under the section 2b of this ep act section 2c is the environmental pollution that means the presence in the environment of any environmental pollutant 
so this is the basic uh, definitions of the environment coming under the ep act of the 1986 so the general what general power they have given for the central government for the under this ep act first one is that they will take all necessary measures for environment protection or central government will take all the me necessary measures for the environment protection and they will coordinate the actions of the state government and lay down standards of environmental quality and pollutants that execute nation nationwide program restriction of areas for industries inspecting industrial premises preparation of manuals codes or guides so all this five step is, uh, five points is there that is about the central uh, general power for the central government the central government may appoint officers and interest them with such power and function it may be deemed fit this comes under the section 4 means central government has a power to appoint any officer and interest them with the such powers they, that officer will have all these powers so that they will work very uh, efficiently for the protection of environment and the main powers is that the, they will take any important steps for the environment protection they will coordinate the actions of the state government some lay down the standards of environmental quality and pollutants execute nationwide programs restriction of areas of industry inspecting industrial premises preparation of manual codes or guides and that uh, in the section 5 they have discussed about the central government is empowered to issue direction to any person officer or any authority and the central government is empowered to make rules to regulate environmental pollution on the following matters and that matter has is the standards of air of water or soil quality in, and the standard of the quality of air water and soil the maximum allowable limits of the pollutant the procedure for the handling of hazardous waste had other substances the prohibition and restriction on the location of industry the prohibition and restriction on the location of industry the procedures and safeguard for the prevention of accidents so this is the uh, empower and regulate environmental pollution on the following matter from for this matter they will central government is empowered to make rules to regulate environmental pollution and the these are the following matters first one is that the standard of quality of air water soil maximum allowable limit of pollutants procedure for the handling of hazardous waste substances the prohibition and restriction on the location of industries the procedure and safeguard for the prevents of prevention of accidents now comes to the next point this is about the prevention control and abatement of environmental pollution that comes under the ep act 1986 so they have given rules like no person or any industries is allowed to pollute the environment that comes under the section 7 of this ep act under section 9 the procedure and process are laid down to control the pollution means all procedure and process has been discussed that should be laid down to control the pollution in the section 10 monitoring authority can carry out an inspection means the, those authority those officers that has been appointed by the board should have to carry it out inspection and next is that they have power to take sample as per the prescribed formats and sample are tested in the environmental laboratories also and next is that stringent penalty and punishment that the penalties and punishment coming under this environment protection act so the uh, first one is that whoever that is controls the provision of act they have the maximum punishment of 7 year and penalty of rupees up to 1 lakh and 5000 per day for continued offenses for defaulter companies or body corporates director or partners are prosecuted that comes under the section 16 and the, in the section 17 this act is also applicable to government department and hod is prosecuted now comes to the why this act is called as umbrella act because they that act in the ep act ep act ep act 1986 they will uh, they will cover all these acts and these acts are the environmental protection rule 1986 hazardous waste rule 2016 biomedical waste rule 1998 is also considered under this act next one is msw act municipal solid waste act rules uh, 2000 noise pollution rule 2000 next is the ozone depleting substances and their rules 2000 battery waste rule 2001 
plastic waste rule 2011 electronic waste rule 2011 so all these several rules that should be laid down under the ep act that's why this ep act is called as a umbrella legislation because this uh, this umbrella this will be acting kind of umbrella because all act and all environmental protection consider under this act and all things related with the environmental protection either it, it is a hazardous waste biomedical waste municipal waste noise pollution ozone depleting substances battery waste rule plastic waste rule electronic waste rule all comes under this umbrella legislation next point is that there are some several notification that issue under ep act that is 1986 so few important notification are comes under this act also so that was the act that is coming under this act now some notification is also coming under this act so the notification for restriction industries in dune value in the year in the year 1989 in dune dune value of the dehradun they have make a notification for restricting industries next is crz notification coastal regulation zone notification 1991 now it, it is it has been amended in, in 2011 notification of the declaration of dhanuka taluka as a eco sensitive zone 1991 notification for the declaration of matheran as a eco sensitive zone in the year 1992 notification for declaration of mahabaleshwar as a eco sensitive zone in 1993 and next is the notification on fly ash in the year 2000 and next is eia notification in the year 2006 so all these notification coming under this ep act in the year 1986 and few important notification are uh, that has been coming under this act also that's why this act is also called as umbrella act so this is all about the ep act and the environmental legislation has been made in india ep act is all about the protection of the environment so uh, in the environment protection act some stringent penalties and punishment is also there that punishment is like if any person controversy and provision of the act has been has been a violation of the act if any person will find for the violation of the act that will be uh, that will be punishable maximum up to 7 years maximum up to 7 years or they will have a fine for the rupees 1 lakh or 5000 per day for for the continuation if they they will do continuation of the offense for defaulter companies or any body corporates that will be comes under default categories like they will give they will fund, they will give their wrong standard for the discharge of their pollutant into the river also they will produce more air pollution they will not uh, installing the air pollution control devices so that that will be like the directors or partners are prosecuted for this uh, this uh, this uh, offense and next is that this act is also applicable to government departments and hod is prosecuted means any government department if they will find as a violation of this act then they should also be prosecuted because this act is a very much important act and this will cover all the act coming under this this uh, category and uh, that's why this act is called as uh, umbrella legislation means why environmental protection rule 1986 has been given by this is coming under this environment protection act environmental protection rule will will discuss about the protection related with the environments and then hazardous waste rule year of the year 2016 coming under this ep act this in this hazardous waste management rule segregation disposal and treatment of hazardous waste has been discussed and how it should be disposed outside of the city so that it will be not harm to the to the uh, society and everything so this all the rules are coming under this uh, hazardous waste management rules next is the disposal segregation and and uh, collection of biomedical rules coming under this ep act and it is this is in the year 1998 like this municipal solid waste rules is also been there that is the in the year 2000 they have proposed and that the municipal solid waste rule has to be strictly followed by the every municipality of the india and that that will um, cover like they will collect the municipal solid waste and they will collect segregation is there transportation is there and then treatment of the municipal solid waste is there next is about the noise pollution rule noise pollution rule means the they have made rules on the control of noise pollution in the year 2000 and next is that they will made rules on the 
uh, on the ozone depleting substances in the year 2000 means that ep act will cover the ozone depleting substances rule means the, the the emission of the those substances that should be that will be creating the ozone hole in the ozone yeah, and some they have made um, in some rules for the discharging of pollutant into the ozone into the atmosphere so that the ozone protection uh, should be there next is the plastic waste rule is there also there battery waste rule is also there that is battery waste rule coming under the in the year 2001 and then plastic waste rule is there that is uh, that will be coming effective from the year 2011 electronic waste rule is there e-waste rule of the year 2011 e-waste is is again the recycling and reuse of uh, electronic waste that uh, that is a very very much uh, very uh, very very much uh, important waste to today's date because we are totally much depending on the technology ICT's technology mm -hmm. and by the dependency on the electronics item the waste is also producing too much because that and that waste should be recycled and that is a very dangerous waste because that that will contain some uh, highly toxic chemicals that is mercury methyl mercury cadmium lead also there in this waste and water in today's due to the awareness people are not aware aware about this electronic waste they are throwing electronic waste in here in their area that is causing very much harm to the people because there's some electronic waste is a very toxic waste because of, due to this toxic metals so in the year 2011, electronic waste rules has been made under the umbrella, umbrella legislation, umbrella of this EP Act. So this EP Act, Environmental Protection Act, is acting as an umbrella act for the for the protection of environment. That's why this is called this this act is known as Environmental Protection Act, and the, all all things related with the safety of environment is coming under this category. So and next is the that uh, that. Uh, in this environmental protection act several notification has been issued and that is of the year 1986 so few important notification are coming under this uh, umbrella legislation is the for first one is that the notification for restricting industries in dune valley in the year 1989 in the year 1989 restriction of industries in the dune valley has been made notification has been passed on the restriction of any industry for the rest uh, for the restriction of the establishment of any industry in the dune valley of india in the year 1989 next one is the crz notification coastal regulation zone notification in the year 1991 now it is of uh, year two, uh, now it is 2011 crz notification has been made has been passed out for the notification for the coastal regulation zone for the protection of coastal areas all the <coughs> coastal uh, uh, areas because coastal area is also coming under the category of eco sensitive zone and the next notification has been passed under this ep act is the notification for the declaration of dhanwa taluka as an eco sensitive zone this place is now a uh, eco sensitive zone and that notification is passed under the umbrella act that is ep act Next is the notification for declaration of methylene as an eco-sensitive zone. Methylene is also coming under the eco-sensitive zone and this has been passed in the year 1992. And next is the notification for declaration of Mahabaleshwar as an eco-sensitive zone in 1993. So many eco-sensitive zone has been passed under this, e uh, this EP Act. EP Act. That eco-sensitive zone... Uh, will coming under the is a very eco sensitive zone no no activity should be allowed under this area because this is very much sensitive in terms of ecosystem and next point is that they have a passed notification on the flyers in the year 2000 so notification has been passed on the flyers in the year 2000 and then eia notification environmental impact assessment eia notification that is environment act assessment notification has been passed in, in the year 2006 in this notification it has been mandatory for every for every industry for every little industry or small industry or big industry they have to first done their environmental impact assessment of that area if any person is taking uh, is 
any construction activity will will come will uh, establish or any uh, mining activity will go on and any activity will go on first of all they will do eia not eia eia means environmental impact assessment with that project to the environment what what benefits and what negative things will come out with this notification to the environment that's why they have passed a eia notification and eia is now mandatory to establish any project it either a small project or a big project eia notification is very much important and the eia should be done by the government officials and they will come and they will do the environment impact assessment of that particular project means what that project will do the assessment what that project will will affect the environment or what it should be done to 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 reduce the reduce the negative impact of that uh, project that particular project so that th this eia notification is very much important notification and that will also coming under this ep act and th that's why this ep act is known as a environment protection umbrella act because uh, that's why this uh, um, this act is known as the uh, umbrella act now this is all about the environment protection and the legislation that has been given in the india and after the stockholm conference 1972 india is uh, getting more, much aware about the protection of the environment so that they have made first of all they started following and they have been started restricting about the protection of environment and that's why they after that they have made some rules on air some rules on water some rule on environment protection and everything they have india has done the amendment in their constitution and already in indian constitution has been given two articles first of upon uh, first of all is the uh, they have stated for article, article number 48a that will have for the duty of the state and for 51 ag has been give, has been given it is a duty of every citizen of and every individual of india to protect their environment and their in and, and all the creatures related with the environment so in in, in india all things has been uh, forced and all things has been all the laws related with the environment protection has been mandatory and it is it is working very efficiently so this is all about the laws and ep act thank you for this session like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates